Hey everyone, it's pretty noisy up here, but we're getting the RISD work on just to give you a little update. Road. Been, I had the bike about uh, eight months or so here in the Philippines. Uh, it's been pretty good. Had uh, some ignition problems and got that fixed. It was like maybe a couple hundred paces or something to put a new ignition in. And, uh, now uh, I notice on the trail when you're riding the clutch hard and you've ridden a while. It's overheating and uh, locks up and won't shift and various degrees, just very hard to operate. So today we're putting in a T Honda TMX uh, pressure plate and clutch uh, clutch plate, fiber plates, and we're putting in a Sniper 155 uh, springs. So that's what's happening here. So hopefully we'll fix that because I guess the uh, Clutch, stock clutch plates are uh, heating up and you know, expanding out under heat, so that's a problem with the rear seat apparently. Or at least mine, so just kind of give you an update. Got the clutch, uh, got the uh, carburetor boot uh, redone, so it's working good. That's the CBO, CPO carburetor, so that's working really good. So we'll be replacing the springs here, so. I'll kind of compare them to the others. So I'm not sure what the other will be. If it's going to be stiffer or whatever. But so clutch plates uh, should replace the clutch cable, but we don't have one. I want for the Honda XR200 on there. So I'll get back out here. So that's what the inside the Lucy looks like. That's the uh, kickstart. Whatever. There's the clutch springs, clutch plates, and fibers. Is. I think it's like a fly or something. So that's what's happening on the RISC today. I got the headlight out. Went to a couple of resorts on Sunday and rode uh, 7,500 kilometers. And the headlight bulb bounced out. And uh, let's see, I got the cover in my pocket, I think, if I can show you real quick. So that's like a little, uh, let's see if the camera will focus on it. It's a little cover to make it uh, kind of look nice. I took that off and we secured the headlights. So I think it's brighter without that. This is just apparently for, that's apparently for looks. So that's an LED, so it's very bright. So got that remounted and secured because that had fell out so I was having a hard time with the clutch it was overheating and couldn't uh, get it to disengage once you stop the motor and it cools off for a half hour or so and then it starts working fine so hopefully this will help fix it so the Honda TMX I think I've got said that right TMX uh, plates we're going to and the uh, sniper 155 springs and then eventually we'll go to the Honda 200 clutch cable up here so get replace the clutch cable here so and then I a little tip I like to do is add some oil in there so you pull that off and put some oil down there and lube your clutch here's the oil I'm going to try uh, had a no tool in there which is you know good very good so this is the new brand, Synthetic uh, Performance RS8. So let me know what you think of that when I get that to try. Because it's air cooled, I wanted to go with a straight 40 weight or 50 weight, but I didn't know if there's anything available. I couldn't find any at the two shops I went to. So, because here in the Philippines, we don't have, you know, there's nothing below 70 degrees. So, it's a, you're always operating 70 to 90 degrees temperature day and night. So, but we're up the Rusi and Brock type Viho here. Elo Elo, and that's where I'm getting work done. Michael's the chief mechanic, and I guess maybe the only mechanic, but he's definitely the head mechanic. He's, we've established good relationships and kind of. I get him and he gets me now, so I believe so. 
So getting that done today on the bridge. So other than that, I still think it's a good value. I'll still, right now, I might have after this day, approximately have uh, $2,800 or something in there, approximately. So I uh, started at around $14. Um, so, so still under three grand, and which that's uh, less than half the price of the Honda KLX. Also got the uh, updated uh, racing performance uh, suspension coming, so that will be here next week. I'll let you know. Getting that from Richard and Minda now, so I'll fill in his information. So going to have 12 inches of sus suspension on the front, seven, seven to eight or so in the back. So yeah, I, I think it uh, sounds out of balance, but they said it. Geometry rides correctly with it. I just think the bump is going to be a different reaction from that of how you ride it. But anyhow, I think the stock suspension, at least mine, is terrible. I mean, just riding over stuff like this here in the parking lot, I feel and seems unright, you know, it's not unrideable, but it's very rough. So when I ride down a rough, uh, Country Road, not Province Road, it just keeps me senseless. I can't go uh, ricocheting left and right and up and down. And I can't uh, really utilize the bike. It's supposed to be off-road enduro motocross bike, and it's barely as good as a road bike. I don't think it's any better than a road bike. I think this Kawasaki here next to me could uh, outperform me or keep up with me. Supposed to have so much more travel. I've got at least a couple inches more, and you never know it because it's so harsh. So, fixing that uh, next week, ordered the new shock, new ports. They're stock, but they're being modified. Uh, if, you get, if you have any questions on it, let me know. At the end of the day, it's uh, results I'm looking for. So, if I ride it and don't like it and think it's uh, not much better, then that's what I'll say. And if it's much, much better, then I'll be tickled. So, so with everything included, uh, the suspension upgrade, now the uh, clutch upgrade, everything I've done is uh, still under third, uh, three grand. It's about $2,800. I don't know what the clutch is going to cost me today. But I'm still under three grand, so I think again, once again, it's a pretty stylish uh, bike. Uh, I think it's very clean. The rear end there doesn't have a big hon honking fender on it like a lot of the brands. And so it's really running good with the uh, this carburetor is the number one performance upgrade that I've done to it. So once again, the CPO carburetor. There's some the numbers. Get your hand on it, and then we put a uh, that's a radiator hose piece to get that to fit properly. That's what we did. And it's still mounted the air box. The air box I took off the little round half dome snorkel on top, which uh, seemed to clean it up, so it's running really good. But it's a strong 200 motor. I used to have a XR200 back in the States. Um, so uh, I can't remember. It ran pretty good, but I think this is uh, potentially faster in my opinion. But it's been uh, 15, 20 years since I've rode that 200. So then all my other bikes have been, you know, really powerful. KTM 250 two-stroke, 382 stroke, 450 four-stroke. So. So I was really hesitant, didn't really want to even want a 200, but it's been surprised, you know, gets around, so it's not going to wheelie and jump logs and everything very well, but uh, it's uh, plenty of power to chug up a hill. I haven't not made a hill because of it. it in fact, it will pull second, third, and fourth even up a lot of the hills. So first is actually too low most of the time. I usually climb in the third, most uh, second if it's really technical, and third or fourth if it's uh, a little faster. So 
but I mainly just do the fire uh, roads back in America, so that's my style. But we'll give you an update, maybe shoot another video here. But that's the update on the Rusi, December the 12th, uh, 2023, a few days from Christmas. So thanks for watching, everybody. Take care of the mechanics back here. All right, thank you.